my story is just just a young kid from the Bronx who uh, went through some pretty tough times, and, um, avoided tougher times, and so um, art is just some place that I escaped. My name is Josue Rivera, also known as Ario, and I'm a graffiti artist. Early childhood was uh, was pretty rough. Uh, growing up in the South Bronx during the 80s, which was the crack epidemic, we, we just grew up around a lot of violence. There was a lot of shootouts, a lot of people being killed over the drugs. So it was it was a pretty traumatizing kind of time. Uh, my teen years started to take a bit of a, I would say a more positive turn. I met some friends who were into the breakdancing scene, and back then, um, hip hop has those three elements, and hip hop is breakdancing, graffiti, and rapping. I fell into the category of graffiti. During those times, there was a lot of undercover cops, and we were young, so we really didn't pay too much attention to just, you know, some guy standing on the platform. But the second you break out a can and you start tagging or something, and they pull out that badge, they take you in for it. So I was arrested around three or four times for graffiti. I know a lot of people may look at graffiti and say, you know, wow, that's just a bunch of kids just running around destroying people's property. I don't think they look at the psychological part of it as to why they're doing it. My dad passed away when I was six years old from AIDS, and it, it came from sharing needles. Uh, my mother died when I was 11. She also contracted AIDS. My childhood was rough, but the, the graffiti scene and the kids that I met really put some positivity into my life. I didn't feel like an orphan. I didn't feel like a kid who didn't have parents anymore. I didn't feel like um, someone who had lost anything. At that time, uh, through graffiti and through the friends I was making, I felt like I was actually gaining stuff as opposed to being someone who lost a lot. You know, and I wasn't a rapper and I wasn't a dancer, I wasn't an actor, so graffiti was one of those things that was giving a lot of us a, a big rush. It had a lot to do with the notoriety and just you know, just getting known and people knowing your name. And so the more you get up on walls, the more you tag, the more people get to know you. You almost become, uh, you know, in a corny way of saying it, you, be you become a hood celebrity. I grew up with a, with a best friend named Daniel Rodriguez. And during my senior year, when I decided not to go on to college, because of my parents' death certificates that I was embarrassed to turn in, Danny called me up and said that he was going into the military and asked me to go with him. My grandma looks at me with just a simple look and said, just go then. And I was like, uh, okay, fine then. And that was it. <laughs> I joined the infantry in 1998 and then Iraq got worse. And so I was deployed October of 2006, extended while I was there until January of 2008. That tour was what everybody knows now as the surge. Um, Iraq was so busy at the time that if you were comfortable on a base and you were infantry, you were sent to go live in the cities of Baghdad. Um, it, was, it, was, it was the tour of tours. It was, it was rough. Uh, I lost almost 23 friends out there. Um, we had a memorial just about every single week for somebody. Um, it was rough. 2013, I went to ranger school and my third day into ranger school, I had a panic attack. And it was an attack that, that kind of left me, um, I guess you would say mentally paralyzed. And I began at that point treatment. Um, being diagnosed with everything from PTSD to TBI, which is traumatic brain injury. And then I was medically retired in 2015. After the military, I was a stay-at-home dad. And I just, I, I went to my medical appointments, took care of my kids and stuff like that. But little by little, I started getting this 
urge to really get back into art. And it started as literally as small as just throwing tags on a, on a small canvas. From there, it just got to where it's at now. And um, now we're just doing massive murals. Laced and Found was such a premature company when it first started out in January of 2018. What we're trying to do is just is bring as much art to anywhere we possibly can. And we'll do everything from canvases to panels to murals on the wall. We've been breaking out lately into logo and marketing and branding. And so we're really just trying to push it and, and promote art as not just free speech and uh, of any sort, but a form that's, that's respected as a profession. Graffiti really did start to breathe some life into me. And you know, I saw a lot of things, did a lot of things and lost a lot of good friends that have uh, made me more enclosed today. And so having this studio here and this, this shop in here and painting in here is an escape from a lot of that stuff. I have fun doing what I do, I love what I do, and I want to continue doing it for as long as I can. I'm a hood celebrity, I'm just living my best life. Um, can't complain at all. Um, this is my shop here, this is where I come in to escape and, and do a lot of hard work.